We are making our way from Eyüp, the Yorkshire quarter of Istanbul, down to the church of St. Saviour in Kora. When I was drawing up the list of places I wanted to visit, I was never sure that I would find this church, so it's perhaps as well that I did what my advisers told me to do and got a taxi. And this chap knew where he was going. This church was converted into a mosque in the 16th century and has been a museum since 1948. When it was converted to a mosque, all the mosaics and paintings were covered up with a layer of plaster. Upon becoming a museum, the plaster was removed, the paintings and mosaics were restored, but obviously they had suffered some damage. Now, coming up, we've got a picture of practically every mosaic and fresco in the building. It's going to be hard going, but I'll try and keep you informed of what the picture is and where it is. But we're going to have to work on it. So let's look first in the Paraclesion or Funerary Chapel. The Paraclesion was added in a major building exercise in the early 14th century, together with the double narthex and the northern extension. The previously existing church thus now forms the core of the present building. So back in the Paraclesion we find that practically every surface is covered either with a fresco or a mosaic. And not unnaturally, the subjects in this Paraclesion or funerary chapel are concerned with resurrection and the afterlife. The frescoes and the mosaics throughout the building were carried out between 1315 and 1321, straight after that major building program we mentioned earlier. The money for this work was provided by one uh, Theodore Metochetes, a powerful Byzantine statesman. Later we'll see a mosaic of him presenting his church to Christ enthroned. The original church here was built in the early 5th century. It was built as part of a monastery just outside the city walls of Constantine. Hence the title in Cora, which means in the fields, rather like St. Martin's in London. When in about 414 Theodosius had a new wall, a new city wall that is, built further out, the church then obviously came within the wall, but retained its name in Cora. A major rebuild was carried out around 1080 at the behest of Maria Duquena, the mother-in-law of Alexis I Comnenus. It needed major repair work in the 12th century after an earthquake and this really brings us back to the major rebuild we mentioned earlier which took place in the 14th century. Unlike most buildings of this type, it's had minor modifications carried out almost continuously throughout the centuries especially after it became a mosque in the 16th century. I am told that there are other buildings like this in Istanbul remaining from the Byzantine era, but I am assured that if you can only visit one, then you must visit this one. We're leaving aside, of course, Hagia Sophia, which we hope to see later. And now we're in the narthex, the outer narthex, and as you will see, the frescoes, especially the ones on the ceiling, have suffered damage, and a lot are missing.
Incidentally, we keep referring to the Byzantine era and the Byzantine Empire. I thought it worth mentioning here that the name Byzantine Empire was first used in 1557, that is, after the empire had gone. In that year, a German historian published, and I loosely translate, a history of the Byzantine Empire. But the term Byzantine Empire did not come into general use until the 19th century. The term Eastern Roman Empire is also commonly used. But can I just say here that when Constantine moved his capital to Byzantium, which of course eventually became known as Constantinople, he was not establishing a capital of the Eastern Roman Empire, he was moving the capital of the Roman Empire to this place. The emperors who succeeded Constantine were emperors of the Roman Empire. The empire over which they ruled was the Roman Empire. Okay, most of the western parts of the empire were lost when they were taken over by invaders though some bits were recaptured temporarily from time to time, and even the extent of the eastern part of the empire varied through the ages. But whether you call it the Roman Empire, the Eastern Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, the Empire of the Greeks, especially as Greek language, and culture became predominant there, it is, or was, the Roman Empire. Its history is the history of the Roman Empire as it evolved through the centuries, until 1453, that is. If we now walk a short way from the church, up the hill, we come to the Theodosian Wall. We particularly wanted to see these walls, the Theodosian Walls of 415. They played such an important role in the history of this place. They kept Constantinople safe for centuries. And there were, through those centuries, quite a few attempts to break them and capture Constantinople. A short walk back down the hill brings us to Miramar Sultan Mosque. You may remember that when we were in Rustam Pasha Mosque down near Galata Bridge, we said that the work had been completed upon the death of Rustam Pasha by his wife Miramar Sultan who was the daughter of Suleiman the Magnificent. Well, this mosque was designed by Sinan for Miramar Sultan and is named after her. Unfortunately, it was closed, so we're on our way to our next visit. By taxi again, don't tell the boss. We're off to have a look at another section of the walls a bit further round. Remember the other day when we were on that tram and we noticed a tram stop near the walls? Can anybody remember the name of that tram stop? We need to tell the driver that name urgently so we can go there, have a look at another section and then get on the tram and get right back to our front door. Yes, it was Pazateka and there are the walls. We alluded a moment ago to the history of Constantinople ending in 1453. But these walls were first breached by that Fourth Crusade, which we mentioned earlier. Yes, 
they were attacked and breached by an army of Christians. And as we said earlier, Constantinople never recovered.